I'm riding the struggle bus this morning. I cannot get this microphone to work. But God's still good. So I'd be happy about that. Would you mind turning on the light back there? Thanks. Wonderful. Oh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Sometimes we have more weeks, but I got, we were having worship practice this morning, I got just a little extra shot of some energy. I was tired after yesterday, but I'm ready to worship the Lord. Amen. 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 I want us to lift our hands. Hallelujah, oh, Lord. Thanks for what he's done for us. Lord Almighty, you do for Jesus, you are so wonderful. wonderful. You are so good. We give you praise for what you are continuing to do because of your faithfulness toward us, Lord Jesus. You're so good and gracious. We give you all thanks in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The Bible says that it pleased God that in Jesus Christ should all the fullness dwell. Mm -hmm. Amen. That means when Jesus was here walking on earth, it was God. Yeah. Amen. There's one God. It wasn't God Jr. that came down and gave his life. It was God himself. Yeah. <sighs> I already said it's good to be here, but I'm going to say it again. It's good, it's good to be here. It's good to be here. If you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, 
turn with me to the book of First Corinthians. We're jumping way ahead because the book jumped way ahead. But also, I read the uh, the next one in line and thought, nope, we're talking about this today. Yep. So we're looking at chapter fifteen of First Corinthians. We're going to start in verse twenty. Go to verse twenty three. When you have it, say amen. Amen. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits. Everybody say the first first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by a man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam... All die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive, but every man in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. If we can all pray together this morning that God would help us to receive from what he has, receive from his word this morning. Lord, we thank you. We know that your word is anointed, that will, it will accomplish what you send it forth to do. It will not return to you void. We pray that it would reach and touch every heart and mind in this place this morning, and those listening online. We give you all thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. You can all be seated. Thank you for standing. I learned something watching Pastor Mueller teach on Wednesday night and Brother Chase when he was here a couple weeks back they would take a sip of their water and they would leave the cap off that way each time they don't have to go and twist that cap off (laughs) and I realized man I take that cap on and off and on and off a lot of times and I probably look like a total goofus (laughs) so The cap is off. <laughs> As Brother Griggs said, you got to have fun. You got to keep it light sometimes. That's so, right. um, Wednesday night, Pastor Mueller taught on humanity. And as he was teaching, I thought, I have nothing new to say for Sunday. <laughs> so, thank you. <laughs> but as I said when I was opening, I kind of felt, man, maybe this isn't, maybe this isn't quite where I need to go. But I, I do feel that, that even though it may be review, it's good to go over it. It's good exactly. to hide the word of God in our heart. Absolutely. And hearing it multiple times over helps that. Mm-hmm. We don't always listen after we hear the first, the first thing said. So hearing it a second time, like, hey, don't do that. Hey, don't do that. And then the third time, hey, really, don't do that. (laughs) Kind of ingrains it in your brain a little bit. Now, this morning we're not going to be saying, hey, don't do that. This is uplifting. This is encouragement. But it's also going to be a little bit of teaching, I hope. Mm -hmm. So it's been kind of a trend a little bit. Uh, last weekend at our park service, I talked a little bit about Adam and Eve, right. and we spoke about the parag- paradise that God created for them, the Garden of Eden. And then Wednesday night, Pastor Mueller taught on the fall from that garden. Yeah. But the Garden of Eden, I was talking to our youth this last Thursday for youth night that the word Eden literally translates to luxury. The garden of luxury, okay? So this garden, everybody refers to it as paradise, and it really, it really was. Now, Adam and Eve had work to do. They were to tend the garden. They were to praise God, but it didn't feel like work. And I heard something the other day how a, a beaver will build a dam all day long, yeah. go to sleep, wake up the next day, and start right on it again. If a flood comes and washes it away, he doesn't go, oh, man, my house. (laughs) He just starts again, Mm -hmm. right? It doesn't feel like work. It's just routine for them. They just just do it. 
right? And so sometimes when we go through our weeks, we're like, ah, I really don't want to go. I don't want to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning. I don't want to have to get everything ready and get dressed for work and spend all day doing something that I really don't enjoy, but i got to pay the bills, so I'm going to suffer through it. Work in the garden was not work like we think of it, right? right? It was paradise. Right. And sometimes I I get a little glimpse of it because I, I kind of enjoy farming if I can only do it for a week once I have to start pulling weeds and I'm out. But, yeah, I hear. but in the garden, there were no weeds, so they had it easy. <laughs> but I don't know. Sometimes when I garden, I'm like, this is the way it's meant to be. I like this. So there are little hints of that through our lives where right. you just know something's right. right. Amen. So... God finished creation in six days, and on the seventh day, he rested. And on each of those six days, he brought forth new life and new things that all led to the creation of Adam and Eve and their placement in the garden. So if we look at Genesis 1, 12 through 13, it says that the earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit, which contained the seed, each according to its kind. Yeah. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the third day. Genesis 1, 21 through 22. God created the great sea creatures, and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind, and God saw that it was good, and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. In Genesis 1.25, God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind, spiders and all. I like to say they're a creation of the devil because I don't like them. But God made the creeping thing, amen? And God saw that it was good. I'm not the one to debate with God, so. <laughs> so God creates the plants, the birds, the fish, all the animals. And it says that he created them after their own kind, and the plants contain seeds to multiply after their own kind. Meaning... A tomato, when you cut it open and take the seeds out and you plant those seeds, yep. you're going to get a tomato. Mm -hmm. You don't plant a tomato seed and end up with a banana tree. That's right. Yeah. That would be odd. Would be very now, odd. you might plant things and end up with corn, and if you have seen a certain movie I'm in reference to, then <laughs> anyway, <laughs> perhaps a detour I shouldn't have taken. But... It's not like ripping the labels off of somebody's cans for a shower, for a baby shower, a, a marriage, what, what do they call that? A wedding shower, um, grocery shower, whatever. You know, you rip the cans off and then they have to play roulette to figure out what they're eating for supper that night, right? You, you plant this, you're going to reap this. You right. sow this, you're going to reap this, right. okay? So, kind of what I glean from that is that you can't produce what you aren't yourself. Yeah. The best way to teach a child how to act properly is to act properly yourself. And as I'm staring down the barrel of a child for myself, I'm thinking, man, I really got to get it together. <laughs> <laughs> so animals are the same way, right? We talked about tomatoes bring forth tomato plants, a banana seed is going to bring a banana tree. A raccoon is going to bring forth a baby raccoon. A dog is going to bring forth a puppy. It's not, it's, it's not weird stuff. Right. You, you expect what you expect, or you get what you expect. Genesis 127, however, says that God created man in his own image. Yep. And in the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. See, so while all the plants and the animals were created after their own kind, and they were made to look their own specific way. We were created in the image of God. Out of all the things in creation, all of the things that God could have used, like 
we treat gold like gold. Mm -hmm. It's pretty precious, mm -hmm. maybe more so to some people, but diamonds are rare. Titanium is a nice thing. There's all sorts of stuff that God could have used to make us, but instead he made us from the, the most plentiful of elements, and just, just dirt, yeah. just carbon. Now, there's some pretty beautiful stuff in the world, too. Pastor Fez always talks about how much she loves the mountains. And I'm glad that she's called to Nebraska, because I'd miss her if she moved. <laughs> I think the mountains are pretty, too, but I don't really want to live there, because the snow gets you, and you slip slide down those hills, and it's just not fun. But there's beautiful trees, beautiful sunsets, and we certainly get that here in Nebraska, and the mountains and animals, but there's also some pretty odd looking stuff too. A giraffe, for instance. You can't tell me God doesn't have a sense of humor. Right. And if you, you look at you look at some of the pictures they get from the deep sea, yeah. some of the fish that they find, woof. <laughs> yeah. So there are odd looking creatures, but then you see the power that's in an elephant or a lion. You think, wow, that's, it induces a kind of awe in us. We just right. can't help but watch it. Right. That's why we invented zoos, right? <laughs> right? We like to be entertained by things that we don't really, I mean, we kind of have control over them because we put them in a zoo in the first place. But, but despite the power and the incredible complexity that this world has to offer, uh -huh. God did not choose the lion or the elephant, or the mountains to bear his image. Uh -huh. Now, certainly they point to his glory. David, say, David says that the heavens declare God's glory. The earth shows his handiwork. But they are not the image bearers. Instead, like I had said, he took the least of materials, right. and he formed man from the dust of the earth. Right. He breathed the breath of life into our nostrils. He chose us to be his image bearers. We were created to bear the image of God, to bear the image of the creator. We were created with the purpose of giving God glory, giving praise to him, but we were also given the purpose of representing God in the earth. Yeah. We know that God is a spirit. John 4 and 24 tells us so. And because God is a spirit, he cannot be seen. No man has seen God at any time. So it was Adam's purpose to be the icon for God. Okay? We've all got an iPhone or have at least used one. And you tap on an icon right. for an app. Right. But that icon... Music, for example, the music app, you click on that little, I don't know what kind of note it is, it's been a long time since high school, you click on that little note and the code and everything that runs in the background on the computer of the phone, yeah, right. that's the app. Mm -hmm. The coding that somebody had to sit down and type out and say this is going to do this, this is going to do this, and then this is going to happen, and so on and so forth, that's the app. But the thing that you actually tap on is just the icon. When you, when you get the icon, you get the rest of the app. Okay? Adam was supposed to be the icon. He was supposed to be the image bearer. He was supposed to be the representation of God on earth. Unfortunately, as we know, the story does not end there with a happily ever after. The serpent tempted Eve to disobey God, to doubt what God had said, and to question whether God really had their best interests at heart. And both Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They sinned against God. They disobeyed his word. And Romans 5 and 12 says, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, that's Adam, and death came because of that sin, so death spread to all men because all have sinned. Yeah. 
Romans 3.23, Paul says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all sinned at one point or another. Pastor Mueller said it the other night when I stole a cookie when I was little and the crumbs were all over my face and I said, I didn't eat the cookie. It's sin. Now, it seems pretty harmless compared to a guy who murdered, but I think it was Sister Rachel told me one time about how, how God views sin, right? Humans, we view it on like a, on a front face where we see a little bit of sin here or a really big sin here, like a bar graph, exactly. But God, from the top down, it's all the same. Yep. It's all disobedience. Yep. It's all sin. There's not varying levels of it, right? I thought, man, that's really good. <laughs> <clears throat> but Romans 6, 23, no matter what the sin is, says, for the wages of sin is death. Right. But, but the gift of God is eternal life yep. through Jesus Christ our yep. Lord. I want to think about the wording that Paul uses here. He says, the wages of sin is death. Okay, what is a wage? Wages are what you get in return for doing a certain thing, okay? We go to, to work, we put in our eight hours, our 40 hours a week, the following week or maybe two weeks later, we expect to get the wages for the work that we have put in, okay? We get the return on investment of death because of sin. But the gift of God, it's not wages. We don't do good, and God gives us the gift of eternal life. There's no return on investment. There's no work involved. There's no pulling the weeds from the garden. It doesn't feel like work. It's that little glimpse of, hey, this is right. It's a gift. It is free. Sister Borkatcher walked through the doors this morning. She said, I've got a few things for you. I was like, oh boy. <laughs> I love things. <laughs> but she gave us a, a housewarming gift. And I thought, that's really sweet. And I'm not saying that to pick on you. And I'm not saying that to pick on anybody else who hasn't gotten us anything. It's just, it's like, oh, I like gifts, right? Yeah. I didn't have to do anything to earn yeah. this. I, I went through life. I, I did what, what's normal and got blessed. Yeah, right. That's how God does things. When we repent, when we are baptized in his name, right? They're not works. It's not really that hard to say, God, I'm really sorry and I want to change the way I'm doing things. Now it's hard to, to, to implement it, mm -hmm. but that's why it's a daily walk. Mm -hmm. You have yeah. to, you learn as you go. Yeah. Right. It's not pay once and you're done. Anyway, in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. This is the consequence. That death is a consequence that humans have struggled with for thousands of years. And we have found ways to escape a lot of difficulties in life. Right? We don't like walking to work, so we invented cars. We don't like freezing in the winter, so we invented fire. Fireplaces within the homes because we don't like to be rained on. And so on and so forth. You go down the list, everything's been made pretty much for convenience. You're right. And we have not yet found a way to escape the consequence of death. No matter how many things that we heap to ourselves in life to make it easier, death still has the last word in a sinner's life. This this consequence of sin is what Jesus came to fix. Isaiah prophesied in the Old Testament in chapter 25, verses 8 through 9, he will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord has spoken it. He will swallow up death in victory. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. And he, this is... 
Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Amen. The purpose of the incarnation was to condemn sin in the flesh, to give the gift of God, which is eternal life, through Jesus Christ. When I was in school, mostly elementary school, it kind of disappeared in high school, but there was always this fear of the permanent record, <laughs> right? Teacher or another student would see you doing something wrong, they'll say, be careful, that'll go on your permanent record, and we never knew what that meant. We're like, oh gosh, we're going to end up in prison as soon as we graduate, <laughs> right? We're not going to be able to go to college, we're not going to get a job. Permanent record was a scary thing, and I have no idea why. It was just, there was something in the way they said it. But that, that permanent record, it would influence your future. And I don't, I'm pretty sure those records never existed. I'm sure they, they set exist, them at, well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> not, to, not to say anything against you, but I bet mine did have a lot in it. <laughs> My name was probably spelled wrong. That's, yeah. <laughs> now, I don't believe that those records, or Sister Fez says they do exist, but they don't hold as much weight as we think, yeah. right? I have a job, despite how I acted in elementary school. Right. It's mostly because my bosses didn't know me at the time. <laughs> but Revelation 20, verses 12 through 13 says that, this is John speaking, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which was in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. We are also called to give an account for ourselves and for those that we have authority over. Every action and every word, the temptations that we give into in this life will be read back to us. Right. There is a permanent record. Mm -hmm. and the list of reasons why we are unable to enter the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. The divine laws that we broke, the disobedience that we put on display, the disobedience to God's word. And the whole list we will have to answer for. That is what we have to look forward to if we continue in sin. Now, I thought about going through and listing a couple things, but as I was writing this, I thought of my own things, and I kind of figured that everybody has something different. We know the things that we did, and the devil likes to try to bring us back and say, hey, remember that? That's right. If you're still lost in sins, in your sins, then they are still written down. Colossians 2, 13 through 14 says, You, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which is contrary to us, but he took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. That list of sins, we all have a different one, can be blotted out. When the bill comes due, right, you get bills in the mail. I hate them. I want to send them back. I'll, put, I'll even pay for the stamp. You, you take it. But when that bill comes due, the only payment for sin is death. The wages of sin is death. But Jesus Christ, through his death on the cross, can write something on that bill that comes due. Paid in full. If we do as Colossians says. Colossians 2, 11 through 12, in whom also 
you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. The Old Testament they had to get circumcised. The New Testament is a circumcision of the heart. Because right. sin is a heart condition. With the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. It says, being buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who has raised him from the dead. Romans 6, 3 through 5, do you not know that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ. And because of that, we were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall all be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Mm -hmm. See, because of Adam's sin, when he and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, yeah. for every person after that who partakes in sin, you identify with Adam. Yeah. You identify with a man or a woman, Eve, who was given the purpose of representing God and being the icon of God in the world. However, you are representing the fact that he, Adam, or she, Eve, failed in that endeavor mm -hmm. and yeah. sinned. Now, sin is a bad thing, but I don't want to beat anybody up because there is a solution, right. which we just read about. When we are baptized into Christ's death, we partake of his death on the cross, right? right? We're putting off the old body of sins and putting on the newness of life. Amen. Okay? We identify with Christ instead of with Adam. Adam was first. The new man, the new Adam, Christ, came second. Instead of identifying with one who failed, we identify with the other who succeeds. Now, I don't care if somebody calls me out for jumping on that bandwagon. Because this is eternity we're talking about. Exactly, exactly. Sports, I could care less. Yep. Eternity, I'll jump on that band bandwagon every day. Yeah. First Corinthians 15, 20 through 22. But now is Christ risen. Everybody say risen. risen. Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man also came resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Yeah. This is why we must be born again. Yep. John 3 and 5 says, Except a man be born of the water and the Spirit, he shall not see the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Paul says in the beginning of chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, he says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you which also you have received, and wherein you stand, and which, by which also you are being saved. The gospel saves. Amen. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. The gospel. Now, I have heard some people try to explain the gospel, and it doesn't make sense. <laughs> they they. They just can't explain it for whatever reason. It, we talked about the other night, there's people who have warmed a church pew for a lot of years and they can't explain some simple things. They, Paul says they still need to be fed the sincere milk of the word because right. they can't handle the meat. So I want to explain to you the, the simplicity of what the gospel is. The, the gospel of Jesus Christ is the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. The resurrection. Yes. That's the gospel. Okay? You read through the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and that's what they tell. They tell about the birth, the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus Christ 
is what can bring salvation and eternal life to those who are living in sin. There are not multiple ways to salvation. There are not shortcuts. Ephesians says that there is one way to God because there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. If you have been born again. Too many people want to stop after Christ's death on the cross. His sacrifice on the cross is powerful. It brings tears to people. I'm, I do not want to discount what happened on Calvary. But no greater love has a man than that he would lay down his life for his friends. That is love. But it doesn't stop there. Christ's Resurrection is the power of the gospel. It is his resurrection that gives us hope of eternal life. Paul says if we have our hope in this life alone, we are among men most miserable. We don't just have hope in this life that we're going to make it through. We have hope in the next life. That we will be overcomers by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. By the blood of the lamb. His blood had to be shed. The the sacrifice on Calvary was needed. It had to happen. But so did the resurrection. And I was talking to my mom the other day about a verse I read. And I can't even. It's in one of the gospels in Matthew, I believe. God is talking about. Or Jesus is talking about. um, The signs of the end times. And one of the verses in there says. um, The. The. Vultures gather around the corpse. He's talking negatively about a group of people in this context. And I thought, what does that mean? But there is a lot of iconography in this world that leaves Christ on the cross. And they would rather walk in the sorrow and shame of their sins that Christ died for instead of walking in the power and the newness of life that he was resurrected for. Now, if that's what that means, I don't know, but it is powerful. <laughs> First Corinthians 15, 14 through 15, Paul says, If we do not believe in the resurrection, we make Christ a liar. For Jesus said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it back up. I apologize. That is not what Paul said. That's what I said. Paul said, and if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching in vain? And your faith is also in vain. We are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up. If so be that the dead rise not. Now again, what I said, if we say that Christ did not resurrect, Mm -hmm. then we make God a liar. Jesus said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it back up. Now, if the resurrection didn't happen, Jesus lied. I'm not going to call Jesus a liar. (laughs) Enter that at your own risk. Beware all ye who enter here. Here here there be serpents, or whatever. Never mind. If Bishop were here, he'd get it. We talk about maps sometimes, and the edges of maps, and I think I'm beyond it right now. So (laughs) Paul says in chapter 15, verse 42 through 44, and then I'm going to read 50 through 58 in closing, because some some of what Paul says is a little bit confusing to read, but this passage is not. He explains very clearly the resurrection. And I better to close with scripture than with my own ramblings. Verse 42, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. 
It is sown a natural body, but it is raised a spiritual body. Paul says that there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither will corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed, for this corruption must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law, but thanks be to God. If we could all stand. Thanks be to God, which gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, Paul says, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I've got a couple announcements. We're going to move into worship. But as we go 